Thursday, January 4th, market analysis, Stan Ehrlich. Good morning, just about 10 o'clock California time, a little bit past the middle of the trading day. In the E-mini, which I always start out with the stock market indexes, usually the E-mini, we have a bearish engulfing ER sell signal again. We had one that didn't work, and it was earlier on December 20th. The market made minor new highs for a couple of days and then started the expected, and I've been talking about it for weeks, downside reaction, retracement, correction of the bull market. I am not long-term bearish. I am maybe even intermediate term bearish, meaning a few weeks, a month or two at the very most, probably not. I am short-term bearish for maybe a week or two. I think that by the end of January, when this correction is over, we'll be making new highs for the whole trend. In most cases, that's going to be new historic highs, either for the first time since the top in late 21, early 22, or we have made new historic highs already in a couple of indexes uh, several days ago, you know, five, six, seven days, Thursday last week. And uh, that didn't hold, obviously. Today, we are having another outside down day, bearish engulfing ER sell signal as we speak. Now, it needs to stay lower than the previous close in order to maintain the red signal and the bearish implications. And we are only down several ticks. So the more it goes down, the better. But... There's a chance because we're smack dab at a support area that that won't happen. So tomorrow we'll find out whether the bearish engulfing survived or whether something else has happened by the close of business today. But if it closes lower today, I've got the signal that you're looking at right this moment when we're down 0.75, nothing big deal. So we could be on our way to the next and probably the last half of this particular dip down or correction. And I'm looking at a likely 4,690, uh, maybe, and it fits very nicely, 4,650 for my downside objective. You got comments, questions, offer ideas, anything you want, contact me at info at ersignals.com. Next chart, we've got the spider, essentially the same thing, of course, but we didn't make a higher high today than yesterday because the trading hours in the spider are much shorter, only 6.30 California time to one o'clock in the afternoon California time, whereas the E-mini, of course, has almost 24. So it was last night or early this morning when we made the higher high on the E-mini and the spider couldn't do it this morning. So no signal in the spider at the moment, plus the spider's up a barely higher at uh, 0.28 ticks, no big deal. It did make a slightly lower low. It does look like to me that it's gonna make lower lows again today. And I do expect it to come down to about 463. Uh, well, actually that should be a little low. Just let me take a look here real quick. Nope, that's about right. Um, at first, the support starts at 463 and then 454 and a half. But there's a gap to close, which I cannot rule out. It's a little bit of a stretch, though. Maybe we'll get down to 446 to 441 and three quarters to close that gap into a substantial amount of increasing support. Next chart. One minute spider, eh, topped out with a little double top a little while ago, hour or two, and we're starting to chew our way, stair-stepping our way down, which is very, very normal. And here is today's price action from 6.30 throughout the day so far. That was yesterday, sorry, at 6.30 until the close of yesterday, and then the opening this morning at 6.30, and the rally, and then came down to close to the lows. Next chart, DIA does have a higher high clearly on the daily data chart today. If it gets below yesterday's low, <coughs> we will have another 
red bearish sell signal, ER, ER signal, bearish engulfing in overbought conditions within the last several days. If it's overbought, it's good. It doesn't have to be overbought the same day as the signal, which oftentimes it is. Next chart. The Russell 2000 has now closed its gap almost exactly. And that was yesterday, late in the day. Today, we matched that and didn't quite get a lower low in, but it looks like it's going to do it, like I think the other indexes are going to do it. And now the gap is closed. So that's a feature that's come and gone. I told you it was likely to be closed. Now it's done. The next stop on the downside, I think, is going to be in the ballpark of one, 190. And a little lower. Next, QQQ. Already making new lows for approximately three weeks. Opened well below yesterday's lowest low for two and a half to three weeks. Bouncing at the moment a bit, uh, but the QQQ is currently actually down 50 cents on the day, lower than yesterday's close. And I think it's going to come down to 388 to 385. And I cannot rule out the closure of the gap at 378.80. Frankly, that looks to be the most likely to me about 383 to 379 and a half, 378, 90, something like that. Next chart. NASDAQ futures contract, which is, you know, the QQQ, NASDAQ, uh, I think is going to come down to 16.034. And that's about it for the indexes today. Let's look at the poor old Santa Claus rally, which didn't work at all this year. Last year, it was approximately a $400 profit. The year before that was the best year in its 25-year history that I've researched, we made about 4,300, I think it was. And for years and years before that, several years before that, it was profitable. And then it had a bad spell. But it's about, even with this bad year this year, about a 70 to 75% historically profitable track record. I showed it to you a few days ago, the equity plot for all of the individual three trades per year, per Santa Claus rally. Uh, so that was 23, 68, nine uh, actual trades and, or 73, I think it was 73. And darn good track record. Not this year. I apologize. Uh, I was hoping it would make some money. It didn't. Let's go to futures. A little different perspective on the continuation contract on the E-mini. All of these futures charts are not the exact futures contract. They are a continuation or perpetual contract. And therefore, they represent the way the market's moving in 90 plus percent of the signals that you would get on an individual contract month. You would get on the continuation contract. So it's excellent, especially for cyclical analysis and larger long term formations that develop when the individual contracts may only live for a year or two. Okay. New lows, minor, last couple, three weeks. I expect it to drop off more. Next is the NASDAQ. Same thing, but now we're bumping into support. It's probably going to bottom out the first. That'll be the NASDAQ or the Qs and start to move up, but that's not happening yet. So it's leading the way down. Next, we've got this um, bond market. This weighs heavily on the indexes. It's making a new low. It's, in my opinion, attending to drag the stock market indexes down. I'm not a fundamentalist. I'm a technical analyst, and that's my opinion. So this making new lows should help my expectation of a little further dip happening in the indexes continue to happen. Ten-year notes. We are not quite stopped out yet of our great buy at the bottom of the ten-year notes on October 23. And I must point out, we got a buy signal at the very bottom of the bond market on October 23 also, and that was the exact low day. 
And yes, we had a trade. I just simply er erased it from the screen with the ER signals. Here, we still have the trade active because it's not been offset yet. The head and shoulder bottom worked. It got up to its minimum objective. We managed to ride the trade uh, pretty much 100% all the way up. And we're going to forfeit a little bit from it correcting from the top if we get stopped out, which we haven't yet. That zigzagging trading uh, line in yellow is our smart trailing stop STS line. The, this line here is the equity plot, and it should be down here because that would be the current quote. So that's our buy entry and our current trade and the profit for the move so far. Next chart, crude oil in a support area, reversed a bit yesterday, not showing too much follow through. I don't know. Will the support hold? Are we going to drop below 67.35? If it does, I think it's an easy reach to come down to 62.40 and maybe make lower lows again, which could be, should be pretty darn bearish. But that remains to be seen. On the other hand, if we start to close above 76.30, and I'm not sure which is going to happen yet, you can see if we close above 76.30, then we probably will rally up to 80.60, 82.70. But I don't know which is going to happen, so I'm not very sure about this. The short-term trend is obviously down. You've got lower highs and lower lows, and that's the basic definition of a trend. But you need to define how much time you're talking about when you use the word trend and people don't. They just say the trend is up. Well, for what? A week? A month? A year? 10 years? Next, natural gas. Overbought as of today. Not quite getting up to resistance, which will be starting at 29.45, 2.945, and probably more heavily resistance at three and up to about 3.2. That's where I think it's going, about three. Next, heating oil. No comments, can't get a good handle. Obviously short-term trend last few months since September, I'm specific, is down. Lower highs, lower lows, zigzagging its way down. There's various support levels on the way down and I'm gonna pass on an opinion as to which one comes first next. Okay, Coke, gold, uh, we have, a sideways trading range today, um, doji, inside day. The low is not lower than yesterday's low and not higher than yesterday's high. So it's an inside trading range day and a little bit higher net change at the moment. Having a little trouble, it looks like getting out of this support level. So I'm going to wait on this as well. We've had some incredible signals this year in precious metals, well, last year, in precious metals. Red is the top, green is the bottom. That was a bad signal for sure. That was great. That was outstanding. And that was no good. That worked for a few, day, few days. That was very, very good. And we have some others that are whoppers. That's the top to the exact day. That's a rally high for a few days. That's the low for over a week. That's the on and on. Next chart. Silver is about the same. Support level has been tested and a trend line. You know, that blue line actually looks like a neckline. You've got to be aware that there's this rally high in here. Then there was the top of the market with the bearish engulfing that we caught along with that high, that high to the exact day. And both of the highs of a double top, amazing, both highs of a double top have bearish ER cell signals exactly. I wasn't expecting that. There was a complimentary one, if you want to call it that, a couple of days after the second one, and crash the next day, huge. At the bottom, green, that means buy. At the top, red, obviously sell. Bottom, green. Top, red. Bad signal. Mm, bad signal. Last one, huge again for a week or two. Now what? 
we're toying with the trend, uh, trend line, which is a neckline, I think. I'm not ready to draw in the arch marks for the shoulders. That's a shoulder. There'd be a shoulder over here, and this being the head. Uh, but if it starts to act correctly, the minimum downside objective is from the highest high to the neckline on the same day. And just eyeballing this real quick, it's below the bottom of the chart, below 20. Looks like it's below 20. Yeah, below 20. Pretty bearish. And that'd be a new low for quite a long time. Looks like a couple of years. Next. Uh, platinum. Dropped to support. Wasn't that big a deal to begin with. Dropped below it. And at the moment, it's staying below it. Next stop on the downside should be somewhere in these previous bottoms. I'm going to have to say 900 to maybe 870. Buy signal on the bottom. Sell signal on top. Buy on the bottom. Sell signal part of the top. Not really a good signal, but sometimes they're not the highest high or the lowest low, which is why I built the trading system, which is 100% automated. You should not have to do anything, although you could if you wanted. We don't lock you out. It's not a black box. We explain what's going on. We do have our little secrets, but we still tell you how it works and so on in general. Bottom, almost at the bottom, green. Top red, top red, top red. Some great signals. That's a green smack at the bottom for a major decline and the beginning of a big one. I love that one. Next chart is high-grade copper. Nothing lately in high-grade for signals, but we're between a rock and a hard spot bouncing around, and we're at a support line, at the previous top bear trend line of a downward slanting channel. That should and often does offer support. So far, it looks okay. Came super close to it. But it's not really reversing as yet. I'm noticing there's an outside trading range today. And if we close higher, which we're not at the moment, we could have, we will have a bearish, a bullish engulfing, which is normally bullish on its own. It won't be a buy signal of mine, the ER buy signal turning green, like here and here and here. But you know, a bullish engulfing is a bullish engulfing and it's supposed to turn prices up. I like them. It's part of my technique. Next, soybeans. Outside trading range today and oversold. So all it has to do for me is to rally up to higher on the day and close above yesterday's close, which it does not look like it's going to do. That would turn the yellow green and I would get a buy signal. But it, again, it doesn't look like it's going to do it. Now I got one over here and we had a profit potential for a couple of days, but the system wasn't rigged at that moment for soybeans specifically to move the stop up as quickly as I wanted. So I'm showing you a losing trade when I could have protected a profit and I could have locked in a profitable trade just by simply changing what I like to call the kicker because it kicks the stop along, just like this line here, kick the stop along, not very fast. And on this short sale, dropped it down. And on this long position from that green, right on the left-hand edge of the screen, all the way up until finally it dropped enough to hit the stop. But they're flexible. But that's not the idea with an automated trading system. You find the settings you like, and you let it rip. And that's because you've watched it for a long time, and you believe it's going to continue to do very well because why would you let it rip unless you were convinced it was going to help you make money? Next, bean oil. We had two days ago a green bullish engulfing that I talked about on my YouTube on Tuesday of this week, the first trading day of 2024. Yesterday, we came down to the green dot, which is our entry for ER3. We're in an ER3 trade. It is still a very small profit at the moment because we're dipping back down again at the moment. I have a stop down here at the yellow dots. 4703, it looks like 02, 4702. So we'll see how this progresses in the next several days. Obviously, I want to rally. I want it as quickly as I can get it. But here's the problem. This is a bear trend. I don't have any real good reason to believe this bullish engulfing buy signal, ER buy signal on Tuesday is going to be the bottom for the next few months. 
In fact, I'm probably going to be disappointed because I think it's going to go up to resistance here at 49, maybe 50, and maybe top out and turn right back down. So as soon as I get a little edge on this, if I can, I'm going to start accelerating my stop movement up to create a smaller loss or risk. And hopefully I'll be able to move it up enough to actually lock in a little bit of a profit. Don't go up too quick, too fast. That's the key. You don't want to be too accelerating. You want to be right in the middle somewhere, not too slow, not too fast. That's a little tricky. That's bean oil. Next meal. Oversold now the third day. Trying to bottom out, not making much success of it. A little lower on the day, but no new low. Let's see what happens next. It should rally some, but I'm not sure what big move is about to happen next. No signals. Basically mildly bearish, but I'm, you know, oversold conditions cause me to look for buy signals generally. We haven't got any yet. Okay, corn. A little rally. This is going to continue, in my opinion, to go the way of wheat, which I've been saying for many months now which is makes new lows, gets a little oversold sometimes, has a little rally up to resistance, turns around, makes new lows, does it again and again. We just made new lows for the year and for the trend on the first of the year, Tuesday, January 2nd, third and fourth is today. The rally's feeble, can't do much. Don't have any faith in the upside, looking for new lows. Wheat, Pretty much the same comment. Its last rally did okay for a week and a fraction. Got overbought right at resistance, though. Started to turn down. Tried to make new highs. Couldn't do it. Made new lows. And today, another new low. Not for the whole trend yet, but it's coming up real soon, in my opinion. Next, live cattle. We had a buy signal on December 15th. And it's now turning out to be okay. I've tightened up the stop a little bit as of this morning. Prior to this morning, you'll look back at my other YouTubes and you see the yellow line going straight sideways. But I changed the kicker to a much tighter one, which means a smaller number, it starts to accelerate the movement of the stop. Well, that's fine. I've still got a lot of clearance here. That's the equity at the moment. And my stop is still sitting down here below um, the market. And right about the price level that we got in. So I'm not going to have much of a profit or loss. A scratch trade doesn't, you know, spinning your wheels, doesn't do any damage. Psychologically, it's a little disappointing. But, you know, what you want to watch is the number on your account. Next, Live Hogs, oversold, has created a nice rally today out of a new low for many months since June. But that doesn't change the trend. It's only going to rally a little bit more, in my opinion, maybe back up to 72.3 again, maybe even a little higher than that, but not much, and turn down. Next, OJ, what a ride. We got short on the top of the market when we had a bearish engulfing ER sell signal in OJ in historic high prices. Remember, I was talking about that green tree disease. I think that's what it's called, but it infected the trees in Florida badly. And so the production went down. We started importing more and more and more from Brazil, where we get most of our oranges now. And as a result, uh, the futures market was screaming higher because our production was shrinking like crazy. But something happened on November 21 of last year, a couple of months ago. We had a bearish engulfing and prices have dropped since. Well, obviously, my first guess is they may have found a cure for that green tree disease. I don't know. I'm not a fundamentalist, but that certainly comes to mind at first. Maybe the big supply came in from Brazil. I just don't know. All I know is, hey, sell signal, get short. By the way, that's the first shoulder on the head and shoulder top. Sell signal worked great for a week. Top of the market, sell signal. Unfortunately, the last shoulder was just one day earlier than I had forecasted before it happened and a little lower in price than what I had forecasted, but it worked. And you bent over, tested the neckline, bounced a couple of days and boom, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven days in a row straight down. And then we had a rally for two days, which managed to stop me out of my trade. And so I'm flat. Right now, we're trading almost exactly where I got out yesterday. Let's see what happens next. Still bearish. That is very high-priced orange juice, so I think there's a lot lower to go. Cocoa. Not really much to say. Next, coffee. Support. Not very close to oversold. Too bad. That would have been a reason to expect it to hold better. We might break the support and drop down to the next support level, which is going to be around 175.30. If it holds here and starts to rally above yesterday's high, uh, we'll see new highs for the trend. Next, sugar. Little pennant forming the last five or six days. Sideways movement. Got oversold badly. <clears throat> so I do expect more of a rally. At a minimum, 2209, which came very close to being the high of the rally a few days ago, but probably more like 23 and a half. Next, caught in the rag between a rock and a hard spot. Very dull, slurring, boring. Support is holding so far. Long-term trend is down, but we've been going sideways since October over a year ago. So I'm waiting for a long-term bullish or bearish breakout probably going to be bearish next the e-mini has now come back up to higher on the day 50 cents higher the dia up a dollar and a half and the Qs are down 42 cents everything is rounded a little bit let's look at the short-term charts on my index workspace so here we are on a five minute one minute sorry chart on the s p spider that's not much of a rally considering the high and the low the DIA may look a little bit better, but not really uh, since the beginning of the day, white. We're in around the middle, basically. And the cues are pretty much the same thing on the one minute. Since the beginning of the day and a gap down and the high, here we are. Doesn't lead me to any fantastic conclusions i flick uh, i go back to the little bit longer term of course than one minute to the daily stuff and that doesn't say we're bottoming out at all we're close to oversold in the queues that's take note you know 32 is fairly low but not in my oversold region of 25 or lower not on the dia the spider is 43 so it's not that close and other indexes just haven't hit oversold conditions quite yet you guys have a great day, profitable trading to you. Bye-bye.